Yo dudes, what's up? This is Planet Keith. I'm Planet. No, I'm not. I'm Keith. And today uh, we're going to do an upcycling project. We're going to turn some beautiful oak engineered uh, flooring into a picture frame. So I've got all this leftover flooring from FreeCycle. Uh, it was a lady whose house had just been refurbished and, you know, this didn't fit. <laughs> uh, but she's, in her little advert, she said it was solid oak engineered flooring. And, well, no picture. And that could have meant anything. What I hoped it meant was that it was one inch thick, 100 year old solid oak all the way through. But it wasn't. However, I'm not disappointed because it is gorgeous stuff. It's all quite highly figured and they've kept some of the knots in and filled them in and yeah and it's, it's got a gorgeous sheen finish polyurethane sheen satin and um, I like it and it's tongue and grooved all the way around and on the ends so yeah uh, no idea what to do with it <laughs> but I'm sure I'll think of a few things however one thing did spring to mind the other day we've got this print which is actually going to be a present for our son so he probably won't see this until he's actually got it and it needs a frame and I thought this you know this mellow oak would fit perfectly with that print and so I set about making a frame and you can see it here on the bench my this is this is mark one I'm not going to show you how I did this because it was a nightmare and for me impossible unless you have tools to cut perfect mitres um, or total ninja woodwork skills you can't you just can't do it I got one joint that's reasonably acceptable and the other three nowhere near <laughs> So I decided to give that up as, you know, a bad job. I'll, I'll use those bits for something else. And uh, I've reverted to a different style of picture frame that doesn't have mitres. So what I'm going to do is adopt the style of design that's been used for the cabinet doors in our kitchen, which is to have um, a vertical style and horizontal rails. So the styles go the full height of the frame and the rails just fit in between but I've done a bit it should be quite straightforward what you need to do is have the inside groove as the innards the inside of the frame and then the tongue on the other side will have to cut that off and so that's fine it's quite straightforward but then on the rails because the ends are also tongue and grooved we want actually we want a tongue on both ends we don't want a groove on this end so I've got that oversize it, it'll have tongue on both ends the short ends and that tongue there needs to be removed and there's the groove which is cool and groovy so let's uh, let's hack about with some wood eh so that's the top rail which is cut to the right width and this will be the bottom rail and I need to cut that to the same width so I'm not going to measure it because that introduces an element of error <laughs> and I'm somewhat prone to those um, so I just want to measure it against the the thing that it's supposed to be the same as and I'll just score a line on there and we'll get rid of that and um, I score this line more deeply because this is already pre-finished uh, you know with the lacquer um, I don't want to chip it or damage it in any way and if you just attack it straight off with a saw you could well you could chip it and it wouldn't be as beautiful as I want it to be I'm going to clamp this to the bench and saw down through the, the top layer of oak and plywood but not through the uh, the central layer which we need to preserve because that will be the tongue. With things like this always use a, a block to protect the work surface. You could very easily squeeze marks into that. You know stuff like this 
terrifies me because uh, if you mess it up, you've messed it up and there's no going back. Okay, we're nearly there. The, this, um, the way this is constructed, that's, uh, that's four millimeters of oak and then there's like one ply of uh, plywood underneath it and then there's the next layer at right angles to that which is the uh, the tongue and groove layer so get yourself a chisel and a mallet and just whack it then we'll just gently remove this layer of ply so now the oak where the where these joints are formed or you know on, on the edges there's a very slight bevel so I'm just going to cut that with a chisel and hopefully I don't mess it up too much <laughs> that's all right right now I need to uh, do what I just did there on the other side hacked off the other side and um, possibly a bit too much uh, but yeah I mean so that's that fits quite easily it doesn't matter about not being a tight fit because we're going to do something on the back to hold it all together so no sweat now I need to get this tongue on the top removed because we don't want that so it's uh, it's quite straightforward to get rid of this but um, a bit tedious because all you have to do is saw at it carefully For a few minutes and I wouldn't want to use a power tool or jigsaw or something on this because you risk damaging the existing edge and we don't want that we want a nice smooth edge if we can and when you're about halfway through turn it over and attack it from the other side because that will stop us getting splintering so there it is roughly put together and I'm loving that I think I might keep it. No, I can't. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've cut all the uh, extraneous tongues off. So what I need to do now is tidy up the edges and uh, fix it all together. And it will be done. Yay! <laughs> However, I have noticed that um, the backing bit of plywood is very slightly narrower than the face. Um, I guess for, you know, a bit of expansion, which means that I'm going to have to take a little bit off um, the edge of the face, ah, which I'm not thrilled about doing because it's going to mess up the, the gorgeous finish a little bit, possibly. But anyway, it's got to be done. So here we go. Um, what I'm going to do is do these long edges together. So I'm going to use some double-sided tape to stick these together. <laughs> so you know when you have a bright idea and it turns out to be completely stupid well the double-sided tape was one of those because I can't get it off <laughs> ah. oh um anyway uh, I've got a nice um, a, a nice enough edge that's uh, that's all right this this plywood's a bit uh, not great you know it's got weaknesses in where there's um, you know bits of wood coming away uh, not to worry I'm not worrying I'm more worried about this double-sided tape because it's going to take me about an hour to get this off Urg. <sighs> well I wasn't wrong about the hour <laughs> uh, it's it still needs another going over it's still tacky yeah old-fashioned razor blade soap and water wire wool and window cleaner and flipping heck don't ever let me do that again <laughs> right so I'm, I'm not doing the short ends you know which will be the the top and bottom until it's all assembled because I want to do that in one fell swoop as it were right so the plan is to um, just cut a strip of plywood six mil ply yeah about that wide for the top and the bottom and then we'll screw it on so that's quite straightforward isn't it 
Right, so I've measured out the width of the strip that I want, and then I've measured, or well, I've just made a mark there, you probably can't see it, but um, that is 32 millimetres from the cut line. I'm going to fix this button on as a fence or a guide, so we get a nice straight cut, and 32 mil, I happen to know, is the distance on my jigsaw between the blade and the side of the sole plate. Okay, Ugh. ear defenders. But <laughs> Okay, lovely strip of plywood. So I've marked out my six positions for the screws and made little pilot holes with the brad hole. I'm going to drill bigger holes. I'm going to be using size four screws. So this is a four mil bit. I need to countersink them a little bit, so I've got a countersink bit on this low power drill <laughs> which I'm deliberately using because if I use if I put that bit in that drill it'll just go straight through so I'm using I think that's a three-quarter inch screw and I did a little test piece just to make sure that it wouldn't stick out through the other side so it doesn't that's just about perfect Right, I messed up the spacing of these holes a little bit. They're a bit closer to the edge of the style than I would like, so... Now, I'm not going to risk drilling pilot holes for this bit because there's a bigger risk that the drill bit will go all the way through and I don't have any kind of guide or stop to prevent that from happening. Just using good old-fashioned brass slot screws. Right, we're all screwed up, as it were. Um, so there's, you know, <laughs> that number of screws is probably total overkill, but there's my frame. Now, um, I just need to deal with the top and the bottom edges. So I think I'm gonna, first of all, hit it with the plane and then the sander. Oh no. Oh, flipping it. Yeah, that, well, that's a problem. I need to get this in the vise. I can't think of any other way. I need to have it, you know, this way up. So I'm going to have to take that jaw off. That's not something you ever want to hear a surgeon say. Okay, that wasn't the end of the world. Um, so I've just removed the oak liner and just stuck a bit of plywood in there. So there's the frame and here's the planer. Right, the planer was a bit brutal, uh, so I'm using the sander instead. <laughs> Lovely. So there's our frame, and I, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. And I have to be, because seven o'clock in the morning tomorrow, we are heading off down the A1 to that London. In an ideal world, I would have some polyurethane varnish to spray on to match the the face but um, this isn't an ideal world so I've got some chopping board oil mineral oil and I'll just rub that on and well I mean that brings it up a treat actually cool look at that so yeah oh one thing missing got to put the picture in so there we are a beautiful picture frame made from old floorboards upcycled and some other bits <laughs> Total cost, not a lot. Well, quite a bit of my time. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make a comment, and if you're not already a subscriber to my planet, Planet Keef, please become one. And don't forget to click the bell so you get notifications. So that's it for now. See you next time. I do like that. <laughs> <laughs>